All right, I just wanted to show you a few things as we do this telemetry exercise out in the field for you to, to remember as you use the equipment. First of all, we've got our three uh, element Yagi antenna. That just simply means it's got three um, parallel antenna elements. And when you get the equipment, it's going to be all um, folded up. And so you just simply need to loosen these little hand washers and uh, tighten them back up and you'll have yourself ready to go. The uh, cable that'll come attached to the antenna is a what we call a bayonet mount cable and you simply need to line up the little holes uh, on the post with the, with, and uh, twist. Uh, so you put it in and twist and then you have everything hooked up. So now you've got a uh, receiver and you've got your antenna. I'm going to turn mine on and I've already got it tuned uh, to 164.544 uh, that's one of our frequencies here and so hopefully you can already hear that it's beeping but this is the directional antenna and so if I point it away from where the signal appears to be coming from I get a much lower volume beep, the signal is much less strong than if I point it in that direction. Okay, so the signal disappears. So your job is to uh, just kind of turn around and listen for beeps. Right? There's a couple things that can be happening as you do this. We're on campus and um, there, I'm going to give you the general location so you know approximately the big area that these are in. We've got a lot of buildings with uh, flat faces and so those buildings are going to give us some bounce potentially. So it's possible um, and there is a little uh, receiving uh, area a region on the back side of our antenna as well. The main receiving power comes from the front side, but the back side of the antenna still has a little power to pick up things. So it's possible when you're completely in the opposite direction that you get some beeps as well. So spin slowly because you want to hear and get it kind of defined within the pattern of the beeps about every second. And you want to find where that pattern of reception comes from. Now your friend in all this is going to be the gain switch on your receiver. And that gain, as the other introductory video showed, is essentially providing more power to your antenna the more you turn that gain switch up. So you can think of that, it's also using more batteries, um, but that's, that's using more energy to improve the receiving power of your antenna in general. So the higher you have that up, the more power you're going to have to hear that from a long ways away. So play around with that because it's of absolutely no use to have it turned all the way up. Let me turn it all the way up and let me show you. When it's turned all the way up, I actually can hear signals coming from all the way around it. Now it, they're a little louder in a certain point, but it never really dies off. So I need to turn that gain down to the point where there's only a certain region that that is that the signal's coming from. Now there's two ways to take your bearing. You're going to walk around these sidewalks, and I want you to stop four times on this L-shaped sidewalk so that we get some cross bearings going at the, uh, at the radios that are transmitting as well uh, so that we, we, our lines are gonna be crossing um, at potentially a 90 degree angle if we're lucky. And one way to do it as we take our bearing is to simply find what we to be believe to be the location as we turn the antenna that is the, uh, the strongest reception okay and once you find that you kind of mark a landmark 
out in the distance and these are aluminum so they shouldn't mess up with the uh, compass and you pull out your compass and I know this is a lot to do with one person but remember to put red in the shed get your slack lined up and then read the bearing from the top of the compass so mine says something like almost 350 degrees okay that's one way to do it and that's the easiest but it's not the most accurate the most accurate way to take the bearings it's similar but you adjust the gain so that there is a place where the signal dies down and disappears okay so I can just start to hear it there so I'm gonna mark that and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the same thing just to where I can barely start to hear it so you can hold this right up to your ear all right and then I'm gonna mark that location with a tree or bush or something that is right at where the antenna is pointed and I'll take both of those bearings and then I'll take an azimuth straight down the middle so I'm gonna to have to kind of plot this out on paper maybe uh, if it's not clear but for example if one was 20 degrees and one was 60 degrees my bearing would be 40 because that's straight down the middle between 20 and 60 now it gets a little harder when it gets to be like 340 and 33 then we've got to sit down and kind of calculate it out right because it may not be completely clear to you. Uh, but in that case that's a 53 degree bearing difference between the two so I need to cut that in half uh, in my mind I think that's 26 and a half so I'm going to add 26 and a half to the 340 side and that'll take me to 360 and it'll take me to six and a half so six and a half would be my bearing in that case and that should be the actual most accurate way because you're not trying to find this fuzzy difference between uh, the, the fuzzy area where it's which is exactly higher which is exactly higher as you move your antenna around you're getting a I can hear it barely here I can hear it barely there and I'm gonna shoot the direction right down the middle so you're gonna do that for four locations as you go around this L and then I'll explain with another video on how you're going to uh, use some grid paper and actually uh, plot this out and determine what the predicted um, UTM coordinate is for where that radio was. Uh, and you've got two different radios to do as well. So practice with both of those. So you'll end up with eight different bearings, four for each radio. All right.